for Charlie, right? Charlie. Probably should have clarified that before. I... <laughs> Cell phone charger back there. If you need one, looks like we're going to United. Yes. Heading home or heading somewhere fun? Home. Home. Where's home? Colorado. Southern Colorado. Oh, okay. Yep. It's still a little warmer in Southern Colorado. Yeah. Yep. It won't be too bad this time around. Yeah. How long did you visit Chicago for? Um, I live here right now, so oh. I'm just, I go to school at Loyola. Oh, nice. Yeah. What are you studying? English. English. Yep. Very cool. You want to do something with it, like be a writer, creative? Um, yeah, probably. Um, right now I'm on the track to go to graduate school mm -hmm. next year, so whether that's graduate school or law school, we're still waiting back on some replies from Oh, places. that's right. Yeah, uh, attorney. You could be an English major. It's one of the things that people do, right? You have to look yeah. at all the wording here to for if and there. Yeah. Is that something you're interested in doing? Um, I, I think so. It's hard to say sometimes. <laughs> you know, it's like my least favorite question is, "Oh, what are you gonna do?" Oh, yeah. I have no idea. That's so fun. My daughter is ten, mm. and people have been asking her since kindergarten. What do you want to be when you grow up? And she's like, she's like, why do they do that, Daddy? Like, why? Like, I don't know. I'm a kid. And I was like, yeah, like, I don't ask that. See, I feel that way, and I'm not a kid anymore, and I'm still wondering why. Well, I'll tell you what I told her, which is, here's the thing. Most people trade their careers when they're 30 anyways, and they end up not doing the thing that they went to college for. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's, you're already doing the thing that you're going to be doing your whole life, which is living and figuring it out. And that is the truest thing. Yeah. So. And then um, it's really funny because Mike, she's like a little bit of a nihilist. She gets that from me. Mm -hmm. But she's like, I didn't even ask to be born, Daddy. Why do I have to get a job? Like, why do I have to go and do She's 10? Like, yeah. Oof. This was like six when she was still time. Wow. And I was like, talk to your mom. I didn't, I didn't choose to bring you. This was not me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I just have to pay for it. She's going to be, <laughs> she's going to be asking that question for a long time. <laughs> yeah. She's, it's really interesting. I was talking to, um, another person who's like a psychologist and and I was telling her how my daughter explained to me she was like she was like I used to think and this is when she was maybe six or seven she's like I used to think people were robots because there's no way they could have as many thoughts as, as I do in their heads like how could they be dealing with it all the time and she was like oh baby's first existential crisis I was like <laughs> She's I, too young to be having existential crises. That's what I'm, I'm like, gosh, she's four, man. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh, no. But again, this is, I was like, all right, cool. Like, I, I did the same thing at, like, five. I would be, like, reading theology and being like, you know, I don't know if this makes sense based on my understanding of, you know, DNA and, and all this other stuff. And then it just doesn't quit. So I'm like, I had to explain. I was like, I'm really sorry that you, you, you're, you got your daddy's brain. It helps that you're smart, but it's you're gonna be a little depressed. So let's start working on <laughs> working on how to manage that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I babysit some kids, um, an eight year old and a twelve year old. Uh huh. And it's just I don't remember being as I'm sure I was and I just wasn't paying attention, but I forget how aware kids can be. Yeah. I think people often like to assume that innocence equals just bliss and, and uh, obliviousness. Yeah, yeah, and it's not often true. No, they're very perceptive and they kind of know what's going on with you internally because they have to perceive it that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Did they uh, did they bust you on something you, you thought they weren't paying attention? Well, the first time I went over and babysat them, I guess it's not even babysitting because they're not even babysitting, but just like watching them. the they taught me how to play poker and i was like what nice. how wow. am i being taught a gambling game by an eight-year-old and a 12-year-old and losing <laughs> it was it was ridiculous it was like what <laughs> had to come well, to my senses a little bit that's funny that's funny well you know what they say if you're playing poker and you don't know who the sucker is it's you yeah, yeah. yep they were they were playing you they know what they were doing Oh yeah, and that's that was the. It was at that point that I was like, okay, I don't have to talk to you guys like kids then. <laughs> but they they know they know that they're they're still kids, so they try and use that to get away with things. And it's like you know what you're doing. Yeah, smart kids. They sound like it. That's yeah. Great. 
we're, you know, I was talking to one of my professors the other day about how intelligent people just are becoming and yeah, it's crazy. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we have, you know, the Library of Alexandria, the full wealth of human knowledge and information on devices that we just carry around with us. Kids, yeah. And kids know how to use them better than, than anything. It's, it's yep. amazing. Yep. Um, I remember my daughter for she would always ask me stuff all the time and she would ask me and so like to teach her like I don't know I have no idea let's look it up I have no idea and um and that's what we do now and so now she doesn't she goes daddy like what are carrots like how do carrots become a carrot and I go I don't know and she goes ask your car ask your car because I have a little button so I just like push the button and then we yell the question and then the phone will talk to me and that's what she loves like she doesn't even come to me for info she's like I'm just gonna look it up like let's look it up let's figure it out which I think is good for future generations. It is good. It's also sometimes it's a bit scary. That's another thing we talk about is like what you know to what degree can censorship be a good thing mm. for younger generations because they have you know wells of knowledge at their fingertips, but also it can be. Yeah, I was reading somewhere that like children are exposed to pornography at like eight. Yep. That's just a thing that happens now. And that's really, I think, can be a big problem because yeah. it's just the way it acts in the mind. Yeah, and that's a thing. So you're right. So at what point is censorship a good thing? And that, you know, I try and be a little restrictive on the internet, what she's browsing, how she's working. Yeah. On. You know, control the YouTube channel, see what's on there, stuff like that. Um, what, where do you lean on it? What do you think? It's that's one of the, the the big debates is because once you start censoring some things, you know, you kind of have to. It's like with things like freedom of speech and just all those conversations, it's hard to really say what you can and can't censor because, like, I don't know. I I try to. I think that censorship ultimately is not necessarily a good thing because it's restricting some some truths that exist. Sure, but right. Also, it's like hard when you see, you know, younger generations being exposed to things that they don't necessarily need to be exposed to. Right, or even or know should. how to process. Yeah, yeah, like how do you, one of my professors has, her daughter is also 10 and kids are just, you know, can be cruel and uh, misunderstand what they're doing but there was like a video of some like gun violence going around and it got sent to her and she saw it and she was like how do I have that conversation with my 10 year old oh no so it's it's a it's a hard topic it is it is and it's like once that happens that you know you once you you can't take it back yeah you can't take it back it's there it's done that's the new norm that's where it's in their brain process yeah, and that really is a thing. There was, um, there's a meme I like put up on Facebook about. They, they showed like the Ninja Turtles like staring at a computer, and it was like, "This is me and my friends watching Rotten.com, like just watching people die online." Because like that's how it was when there was like zero filter, mm-hmm. and it was like we were doing it at school. They didn't even know how to content filter at schools. That didn't even exist yet. So we just had a wide open internet, two teenagers, yeah, at school, and it was just like nuts and that was that's when it was, it was like a wild house you could just watch the craziest things and what does that do but we were teenagers we were looking for them. we weren't kids that were just exposed because it just happened yep um and there, it, interestingly facebook has this cool thing called kids, kids messenger yeah mm-hmm. or messenger kids mm-hmm. and wow. they can meet with kids from their school but it's through the parents so the parents have to say okay you can talk to this person like that. okay fine and if the parents have a facebook then the kids can talk via facebook messenger um and it's their own little thing and so that kind of allows a level of filtration for the exposure yeah i think that the the filtration is for sure getting better it's just it's also just hard because i remember when i was a kid i feel like i didn't either care or care to pay attention because i was just a kid living my life but right the kids that i watch are aware of like all the political discourse and everything happening and it's just like i wasn't thinking about that when i was a kid yeah yeah my kids very much that way 
And I think that's that's the innocence that actually matters, of the carefreeness of being a child. Yeah. Right? Because, like, I'll ask you, I'll be like, where are you going today? And she's like, I don't know. I'm like, you're just along for the ride. Like, you have no thought process. Of, yeah. Am I going to the mall? How do I, what's the mall? Where am I at? Where am I going? Like, I'll ask you, like, do you know what neighborhood you're in? What part of town? Could you get home if you had to? Nothing. Nothing. And I'm like, okay, that's great. You feel very cared for. You don't have to think about it. Yeah. But to, to a degree, it's like also, you know, should maybe start paying attention to your surroundings. Oh, yeah. Right? So when does that happen? You know? Do you want to have kids someday? Um, I think so. It's, you know, it's a hard thing, too, because it's like, I feel like having kids is so much more people are just I guess more in control of it now so they can just like they can choose not to mm -hmm. like that's an option but yeah. I would like to think so sure hopefully the world continues <laughs> to be a place where that's you know a, not as worrisome my brother is actually I'm as I'm going back home for Thanksgiving he's him and his wife are due for their firstborn on this week so that's oh. exciting yeah, I know you, you bring up a great point. It's like there's a lot of control, so a lot of people now more than ever are like, ah, I'm going to wait till I'm ready. But it's like, well, you're not going to be ready for a while because nobody makes any money anymore. So Nobody makes any money anymore, but it's also like, you know, some people are like, well, I don't want to bring my kid a kid into this world. Yeah. It's like, yeah, they're like, it's terrible. There's violence and, and you know, global warming and all of that's going to be a problem. Yeah, absolutely. But also, it's like you have to, at, to some degree, you can't just quit, you know, I quit agree. life. Yeah. Well, that, and that's the thing I, uh, I've come to that realization where, like, right now we actually live in the calmest, most peaceful time we've ever had. Mm -hmm. But because people are aware of all the things that have been going on for the last 5,000 years, we're now seeing them all and going, oh, it's way too crazy to have kids. But we've been having kids the whole time. Yeah. It's never, we've never not. And in my opinion, the only way to overcome any of this is to keep having kids. It's not our generation. It's not my generation. It's my, my daughter and mm -hmm. her kids that are like, she's like super highly ethical. Like she's like, you know, daddy, you didn't put the, you took three bags at the, at the grocery thing. So you didn't get charged for them. And I'm like, oh, I must have forgot. But like. She's like, how could you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and they're just really highly ethical, highly honest, but it's not, it's not happening on my generation. It's just getting us there. Yeah. Do you think part of that has to do with just like, that's how it's just more relevant to them than it was to other generations growing up? Yeah, it's more in their wheelhouse. It's more in the front of their mind. Like, because they're not where, you know, I was a latchkey kid at seven. I was coming home alone. Yeah. And, like, feeding myself until, like, six and, like, doing all that. That's how my mom was, too, yeah. Right, see, and so that takes up a certain amount of space in your mind. And she just doesn't have that. So she can think about other things. She's really creative. She's very interesting. Obviously, a little stuff about existential crisis and whatnot which is strong for for someone her age so it's like it's just she's just thinking about different things now and some of that is ethics and morality and right and wrong and and you know they watch all these tv shows and cartoons and it's always the, the it's always those stories of, yeah of and so they're going to act that way because that's the examples they see because the human brain doesn't differentiate what it sees on TV from real life. It's real on TV mm -hmm. for a long time until you're like, this is like people get mad at actors that are like, I hated you, you're Joffrey, you're the worst. And that guy's like, I'm an actor. This is an act. I'm like, but you hate me. Okay, cool. Yeah. Those, those are full of grown adults. The human mind is not separate. <laughs> yeah. It's unfortunate. Um, so kids are that way. They're just like, this is how the way the world is supposed to be. Unicorns, dragons, and you don't steal the plastic bag. Mm -hmm. What kind of law do you want to practice? Oh, that's this is this is why I have a hard time with knowing I. The reason I don't think I would be good at law is because you have to, to some degree, be able to potentially argue for the bad guy, and yeah. that's like, oh, mm -hmm. I don't know if I can separate myself enough to do that. Right. Um, 
But if I if I do choose to go into law, I think I would probably go into environmental law. Um, oh yeah, huh? That's and, probably the only good black and white here. If you're fighting for the environment, you're fighting for the human. Yeah, so yeah. That's a really great point. Um, and just like law around like indigenous um, cultures and populations, yeah. and that's a very not new conversation, but kind of new conversation mm -hmm. that's happening. So it's yeah. interesting to see it unfold. Yeah, that's a great point. I hadn't really thought of those fields of law, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, just because of where I grew up, my grandparents and family um, run an environmental lab, so they do like water testing and a lot of, a lot of we live around a lot of farms. They do like soil and crop testing and stuff oh, like that. So it's just like, I kind of grew up around it. Okay. Um, so I already have the interest, but we'll see. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're already there on the environmental side of it. So yeah, you could be arguing for the, uh, you vocal for, for the plants that need. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Do you think um, Colorado's gonna be home as soon as you're done with school? Um, probably not. I come from a very small town and coming to Chicago has been very, um, I think it's been very good for me. Huh. And not that I don't love my home and where I come from, it's just I don't know if it's, at some point I might move there, but after I finish school, probably not. My buddy, he was, he was looking for a place to move to and he's very like picky about He's like, what's the safest places you can live in the United States? That's where he's like, he's like, I want to go to the places where there's like, hasn't been a robbery in 50 years, you know, type of thing. Oh, that's hard. Yeah, right. And one of them was, and it was in Colorado. It's this place that started with an L. It's like, I think it's uh, Laramie or Lambert, something like that. It's south. Eight. Okay. And it's right off the 80. And so we ended up driving there. It's like, it's like a 16 hour drive from here. Yeah. Um, but it was just like the quietest i was the whole time i was like there's just nothing there's nothing out here was it lamar lamar okay it was lamar. trying to I'm trying to think of l places yes yeah. that's where it was that is a very small town in the middle of nothing yep and it was like i was like what is this place like there was just nothing to it um and but they had a hotel I'm like that was so I stayed in the hotel had okay food and, but I was like he was like this is great he's like this is great because he's very much a hermit type of person so he'd be fine but I was like there's yeah there's nothing there's nothing. really nothing it's that's hard yeah so are you close to Lamar then um I'm about three hours away from there okay so not super close but yeah. kind of I live in a different you have to go over a couple mountains to get to where I am I see okay yeah because I know that like he's on the he was on this side of the Rockies or something mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah so but Colorado is really pretty it's really nice yeah yeah and that's what I, I it was I was like okay yeah it's very green it's very pretty it's very lush we drove out there in like I want to say May or April I think something like that <laughs> And it's nice, it's green, it's pretty, it's beautiful. Great yeah. Weather. So that was nice. Yeah, that's, I think that's been the hardest thing for me coming here is that I am so used to just having really a lot of nature and just like kind of can distract myself with that at home. And coming to Chicago, it's like harder to find things that you don't really have to like spend money to do. It's easy, but it's just like there's, it's harder to get places that are quiet or removed. Yes, that's very true. Yeah, yeah. He's up in um, Grays Lake, and that's what he likes about it. He's like, there's a ton of lakes, and there's a ton of hiking paths. He's a husky. Yeah. He's like, we just walk for like three hours. That's what we like to do. Um, because you're right, there's not a lot of things to do that are free in the city. Yeah. Yeah, and that's like the culture of America, the consumerist culture that we live in. Yeah, that was the biggest culture shock coming here is that there's just people everywhere doing things and so, like I lived downtown last year which oh, was wow. an insane experience yeah, yeah, yeah. um one that I am very grateful I had but I just the difference between downtown Chicago and where I live because I live 45 minutes away from an actual town so we, li we live in the mountains oh, wow. and it was just like it's just two completely different worlds. Oh, it's gotta be. I bet even this seems busy. Like, this neighborhood here is probably like, there's a lot. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, I moved to Chicago from Los Angeles. Oh wow! Yeah. Big city to big city. Exactly. I grew up. I grew up in um, Northern California, but like near San Francisco. Okay. Yeah. So I've always been a city person. I've always been. Like, I like the hustle bustle. I like all the people. Yeah. I remember I had some friends that got married in Washington, and it was like middle of nowhere Washington where it's like all trees and green and everything and I was like I've seen this scary movie before like this is I I don't <laughs> want to be out here man like yeah I, I can't deal with it I had, like, had anxiety and I remember I was like I left I left the thing and I was like I can't be here I gotta go and then I saw a Starbucks and I was like oh okay right, it's <laughs> so, like a Starbucks and a Target and I was like society finally I can relax <laughs> that's just the type of person I am yeah so where do you think home any ideas of where you'd like to see? Um, I, I think that as much as I love Chicago, and I do love it here, I've really grown to love the city and just like the atmosphere and the people here are really nice too for me. Um, I think that I do, I, my dad lived in San Francisco for a lot of years, so I really like San Francisco. I don't know if I've moved there right now, sure. but um, I think I would like to be out west at some point, whether that's Washington or Oregon. I think that there's a lot of good mixtures there of city and mountain, so yeah. maybe somewhere in between would be good for me. But Those are great areas, and then you're also going to find a lot of people that do care about nature and are going to be more on that side of, of shaping what we're doing to it where you might not find that like in chicago people here aren't that environmentally inclined yeah there's some there's definitely some but it's, it's like a, chicago's yeah. pretty good about that for a city i feel like there's lots of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it used to be so bad you know the chicago fire you've heard of it right yeah i was talking to my daughter about it and how one of the reasons it was such a big deal was because when the fire started they went to go put it out using water from the lake and the water from the lake was so toxic and putrid that it spread the fire more. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so like that's why Chicago has become environmental but it used to be like don't touch the water anywhere around it. Because it was very toxic. And now it's a lot better? Oh yeah. Tons better. Tons yeah. Better. Yeah. Yeah. But it used to be like yeah it was, it was the, like all the manufacturing out here would just dump into the lake. They would just dump everything and that's just what they did. They're like, oh yeah, no big deal. Just dump it in the lake, dump it in the river, here we go. And the river would go into the lake. So they would dump stuff into the river and then all of that stuff would go into the lake. And so they engineered it to do different than that. So it goes out and they're starting to clean it up. And all that stuff. Yeah, I read, have you ever heard of the book, um, The Devil in the White City? Mm, I've not. It's a book that's part of the reason why I actually ended up coming to Chicago is because of that book it was it's about the world fair that was here oh okay at some point oh it's, it's yeah true. that yeah. was the good it was about the murderer correct yeah, yes hh H. holmes it was yeah. like a it's like a two-part two like dimensional like perspective book so like half of it's from his perspective and his story during the world fair and the other half is from the architects who were building the world fair uh -huh. and how everything was unfolding and i was like I was just always very fascinated by the architecture here. Sure. It is really fascinating. We've done the uh, architecture tour a couple of times. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I even when I walk around the neighborhoods here, it's like, I really love the architecture here. Like the houses and everything are just so pretty. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Have you been to like Oak Park or anything outside of the city, like the suburbs? Oak Park is like where Frank Lloyd Wright was. And so a lot of the homes are, are in that in that field of like the bungalow really nice style oh i would love to go see it no i haven't really been much to the suburbs of chicago i've mm -hmm. mostly just been in the neighborhoods a mm. little bit i need to do more exploring yeah it's how much just... more time do you have here before you're you're done learning so i graduate next year okay. um but like i said there's a chance that i end up staying here for more school sure, sure. We'll, we'll see but it's it's a great city. Yeah, it is. There's a ton to do, and in like yeah, like I said, if you go and explore the suburbs, like architecture, there's a lot of history to it. Um, I think Chicago is like the third biggest city in the United States, so there's just a ton to the whole metropolitan. Yeah. What made you want to move here from Los Angeles? Ooh, uh, great question. I didn't want to move here. 
my, okay. kid, my kid's mom was from here, and after her and I split up, she moved here with my daughter. So I came to, I do this, I work in tech at home, and I'm a comedian, so I'm like, whatever, I can do all that anyway. You so, work in tech? Yep. Okay. Yeah. My roommate's a comp sci major, so she's forcing me to be more aware of all the technology that exists. That's funny. Well, you can tell her that she can just skip the major and just Google whatever she needs to know. <laughs> I know it. That's, she does all kinds of coding and crazy things that I just can't. My brain is not wired for that at all. Yeah, and honestly, that's a good thing. Developing and coding and programming is extremely boring and meticulous. I also, it's fortunate I don't actually do that side of it. Which is mm -hmm. cool. um, I do the cloud infrastructure, so like the server systems and all that stuff. It's, it's a lot easier. I made it up as I go, I'm a high school dropout. It's very easy to just Google and figure it out. Yeah. But developing, you have to know, it's like speaking a language, it's like writing. Well, if I want this to do this, how do I put that there? And I have to make a line for it. Yeah. And it's like millions of lines of that in order to like get things to happen. It's so meticulous, I can't do it. Yeah, it's, I agree. I look at some of the stuff that she does sometimes and I'm like, nope. <laughs> Not for me. No, thank you. That's all you want. Happy that people like you exist that I don't have to. Exactly. That's exactly it. That's really it. Yeah. So do you like Chicago compared to... I, I do. I like the people. I like the city. I love the architecture. I love that there's stuff to do. I'm very... I love the high energy of it. Um, but I am very much a lizard. I am a solar powered person. Yeah. So I'm in the wrong, the wrong state. I told my daughter, I go, if they were to put Chicago in Los Angeles, I would never leave. Yeah. Ever. I just, I don't know why anybody would build a city in a place that's this cold. Yep. So, yeah. <laughs> that was my, that was my big mistake coming to school here is, uh, you know, from Colorado. It's cold there, but my family was like, why are you going like one of the few places that is colder than here? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know right. why I did that. Cause I was so confident too. I was like, oh, it's Chicago. Like I'm used to the cold, it'll be fine. It is a completely different kind of cold here than it is completely at home. Different kind and I of was humbled <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I, you know, I tell people, again, I've been here for, I've been here in 2018, so it's been about five years. And so I tell people, I have not acclimated. I just have snow-induced PTSD now. <laughs> so when it starts getting cold, I shut down. It's not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard. And then it's, like, cold and winters here are dark, too. Oh, yeah. This time change is kind of killing me right now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right? It's dark at 4 p.m. I like, know. It's horrible. Terrible. Yeah, and you know, people get ready for it. Once the leaves start going, you can see everybody's getting ready to bundle it up, everybody's already doing stuff. It already snowed on Halloween. Halloween, I know. You know, so like, it's just, it's already, it's just part of the cycle. But see, this is why, like, Los Angeles, San Diego, as soon as my daughter is 18, so I got eight more years, um, her birthday was Tuesday, so I'm like counting down. Uh, but as soon as she's 18, I'm, I'm going back to San Diego or LA. Like, that's just highly permanent. But yeah, you could do, like, the, the Pacific Northwest is very mild. It's not freezing cold. Mm -hmm. And that's, so that's definitely a, a nice change. Yeah, I don't, that, that's, like, part of the other thing. It's, like, I would love to move there, but I also don't know if I could do all the rain. The, oh, yeah. Because it is, it, it's not super cold there, but it's also not super sunny. So exactly. it's, like, yeah. there's so many factors that go into it. It's nice. I will say that I talk about my parents about this a lot because they are constantly in shock that people have the ability to pick where they want to live based on where they want to live and not based on like jobs oh, or like yeah. where you where you have to go as sure. much anymore yeah. as it used to be. Oh yeah, that's very true. You're right. Now they can say, what climate do I want to live in? Because I'm, I want to do this type of work and you can do that type of work. Mm -hmm. anywhere whereas before that was not the case um 
yeah and that's just the world we live in progressing over time is really all that difference is it's, it's really interesting that way um yeah yeah it's fun like that and i'm very curious with my kid like how that's gonna be I'm like yeah when you're 20 because that's where you're at you're in your 20s you're gonna mm -hmm. be like where am i gonna go what am i gonna do yeah and and that's it the world is it hasn't even started opening it's you're still in the in the uh, tutorial phase yep of life and they need to build it i know it's it's exciting i was um i have a lot of friends that are like studying abroad right now oh nice and so it's and one of my roommates is going to go study abroad in thailand next semester and so it's just like it's so interesting to see how people can just go anywhere they yeah. kind of want to yeah yeah, I had a friend who was a teacher out in Thailand, actually. So mm -hmm. He was out there for like four months teaching, teaching English. Oh, yeah. And it's a completely different culture. Like, oh, yeah. It's so different. And he's like, most people can like work at 7-Eleven and make enough to live. Yep. And they, they it's a completely different lifestyle out there. Yeah. Very casual, which is interesting. It's, yeah, it's always interesting. A lot of my friends that like study abroad in European countries are always like... What, what do you mean the United States is the greatest country? Right. These guys are just relaxing and enjoying life. Exactly. It's like, what's the great? They're like, well, it makes all this money. It's like, yeah, but we don't get any of it. It's <laughs> not yeah, good. We, exactly. We don't good. get any of it. Yeah. We are, yeah. We're here. It's like, we're basically feudalism now is basically it. It's just a bunch of people working for the ultra wealthy. It's like, this isn't, this isn't a great system. Yep. Um, with your friend, if they're going to Thailand, tell them to watch, to clean their shoes before they would like to check them. Mm -hmm. Somebody got bit by a centipede and turned his toe black for like six months. Oh gosh, yeah. I can't, I, I can't. With, like, there's some places in the world that I don't think I could ever go just because of the wildlife there. Sure, sure. That was another random thing about Chicago. I had never. There's not cicadas oh, where I come yeah, from, same, and I remember same. the first time coming here, I was like, what? What is, what that? is that? Yeah, it's the thing. And they're yeah. huge also, so it was just yeah. like seeing them, I was like, ugh. Yes. Yeah. They're not harmful at all, but at it was all. just still like, I don't like that. Oh, for sure. Yeah, they're not in California. I came out here in the summer. It was not, it was, it was no fun. Also, I, well, you know, I don't know if you, if you go home during the summer, but like, mm -hmm. it rains in the summer here. I, I have not been in Chicago yet yeah. in the okay. summertime, so I'm yeah. excited. I will be here this summer, but. Okay. Yeah, there's there's no humidity in California, and it, and it doesn't rain in the summer in California. There's no humidity. None. Wow. It's beautiful, and so I was like, "What? Like, what is all this?" And I've been like, I know I'm well aware now how spoiled I was, and I just happened to live in one of the best climates that you could. I grew up in wine country in California. Okay. And so like, it's just always just mellow, temperate, very moderate, very nice. Yeah, so I never saw snow until I moved here ever. Wow. Yeah. So. <laughs> wow. And you just so you don't. I have some friends that are from Texas and have never seen snow until here, and they love it. So, oh, yeah. did it have like kind of like a whimsical thing at the very beginning? No, you just never. You were just like, no, this is not it. No, and it was a, it was a really awful thing because it was like I moved here I, at the time as I was trying to be together with my my daughter's mom. Mm -hmm. And it was also the worst snow in 30 years. Like okay. it's a 30 year record breaker for the amount of snow yeah. plus how cold it got. Uh, so that's where I learned that like bone chill and cold is an actual sensation that you visit. Yep. I, you can't shake it off. It's horrible. Yeah. And so, so I went through that. Plus it was like, it was a really bad relationship, a bad situation. So it's just all dumped on me, dumped on me. It was like, yeah. I was miserable three years I was like this is just the worst thing ever yeah um, and then we actually moved back to California and I was like I would rather die than go back to Chicago but turns out I you know I can't I, I don't want to live here but like I can't live without my kids yeah, yeah. well and that was it. at least you you know have been able to find somewhat of a good perspective on the situation yeah, exactly. You know, I, I tell people, it's like, I'm living in the, like, second worst case scenario I ever could have imagined, but I am making the absolute best out of it. That's, and that's, perspective is everything, yeah. so. Yeah. Does, does your daughter like it? 
No, she also hates it. Okay. Yeah, I took her to, to visit um, where I grew up because my father's passing away in May. And so I took her in May and she was like, everything's green. I was like, yeah, she's like, everything's green and vibrant and alive and beautiful because it wasn't, it was still cold in Chicago. I was like, yeah, it's like this most year round. She's like, why are we in Chicago? I said, Talk to your mom. Like, this is not, it was not my choice. Did, did she come here for work or just because she wanted to? She grew up out here. Oh, okay. Yeah, her mom grew up out here, so this is where she was from. So, yeah, she does it. That's what she came for. Yeah, her mom actually doesn't work. She just married a, a much older man. Okay. on it and it's like so those days where it was like 115 degrees outside uh, we were just like this is horrible it was yeah. horrible because it's humid and it's yeah. like you're just you're just sweaty and just, it was yeah. not fun but now it's like okay but we're gonna be cold for nine months exactly this, yeah this is never like I've, I've said that Chicago has two weeks of nice weather and it's spread throughout the year yeah. You get you get three days at the beginning of summer, three days at the end of summer. Uh, you get about four days in fall and four days in spring, and then one or two just random nice days, and that's it. Where it's just like it's like oh it's great. This is just a perfect day. And that's it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting for sure, and it's just like I don't know. Like I said, I love it here, but. It's you pretty much just have two seasons here is winter and summer. Oh yeah. They, they there's actually a joke that says there's actually only two seasons in Chicago. That's snow and construction. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah, I guess that is that is fairly true. I don't really drive here so I don't have to deal with a lot of that. And that's one of the great things about the city is there's public transport everywhere. With the L, you can get everywhere in the city. Mm -hmm. um, I live right by, actually not far from you, at Brandon Station. Mm -hmm. And so from, from the red line, you can get to Oakland. So I'm like, I can get to anywhere in the world without a car. Yeah. You know, I just hop on that, hop on that to here, and, and I'm good. Like anywhere. And that's cool. That, I think, is amazing that you don't need a car to go. Yeah. I, I will say that that is very, it's helpful because so it's like a 20 hour, over a 20 hour drive from where I live to get here. So it's just like, bringing a car out here is just almost not worth it because oh, it's yeah. like why I don't need it and I don't need the expense or the... Yeah, yeah finding parking, the stress of all that or you're going to have to pay for it. Like, yeah, yeah. And, yeah and in that area, mm -hmm. parking is a nightmare. It's yeah. A nightmare, yeah. I believe it. My friend has a car and he's just like... Awful. I knew I knew people that lived like, actually not far from you. I think a couple blocks away, and they were like, "You park your car, and then you have to call an Uber to drive you to your house because you're so far from where you, where you live because there's no parking in the area." Yeah. Yeah. Really At least the weather's nice today for flying. Yeah, nice. You're right. Nice clear skies. How long you fly? Like three hours, something like that. Yeah, something yeah. like that. It's like a little, yeah, maybe like bad. two and a half, three. Not bad at all. And then how long is your vacation for? Um, just Thanksgiving, just this week. Oh, it's kind okay. of quick. Okay. Not too bad, but it'll be a good little break. Yeah. I'm excited to see family, maybe meet your meet your new niece or nephew. Yeah. yeah that'll... Hopefully. Alright, well here you are, Charlie. I hope you have a great trip. Thank you so nice much. I'm gonna grab my bag from the back.